DA leader John Stenazen asked Speaker of Parliament Nosivua Mapisa Magola to form an ad hoc committee to look into allegations surrounding theft claims at President Cyril Ramaphosa's Palapala game farm. However, Nosivua Mapisa Magola declined the request. The request by the Democratic Alliance's leader was a turn down since several of the committee's suggested tasks are already being looked into by other organizations. The Speaker also refused a request by the African Transformation Movement for a motion which calls for the removal of Ramaphosa as president. For more on this, we speak to political analyst Professor Sutulejo Matelesi. Prof, thank you so much for your time. Your insights on this program, of course, are always welcomed. Uh, let's start with your thoughts on the Speaker's refusal to entertain uh, this request my, made by the Democratic Alliance. Hi, good morning, and good morning to the two and South Africans. Uh, it's, it's always difficult once you, you have such a very critical issue, or should I rather say sensitive issue, irrespective of any alternative measures which are proceeding, like, for instance, if the matter is in front of a court of law. By the way, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but... Uh, I do believe that Parliament does have the right to discuss certain issues which affect the country, and perhaps that's where the Democratic Alliance comes from. Uh, come from. Uh, but I think also they are jumping the gun here because they, it has been a hullabaloo about the uh, security cluster, the police, and uh, the investigative directorate. Uh, to investigate the matter. So perhaps that should first be concluded. But politicians being politicians, they would like to exploit, uh, at least get maximum uh, exploitation out of this particular situation. Mm. I mean, the reasons provided by the speaker do seem prudent. The fact that other investigations are already underway into the matter does seem, you know, not to waste the state resources by putting together an ad hoc committee to take a look at this when we have other institutions already doing just that. Um, however, one does question, you know, the role of Parliament, Parliament's oversight role when it comes to uh, the governance of this country is equally important. Perhaps the Speaker could have come up with a, another way of entertaining the matter before parliamentarians as opposed to completely leaving it out um, of the work of Parliament to try and get to the bottom of what's happening with regards to this particular matter. Yes, uh, most definitely. If you look at a situation, it, it is a sensitive issue uh, affecting uh, the chief executive officer of the country. And uh, for the Democratic Alliance and ad hoc committee, these are normal procedures at, at Parliament. When there are issues that need to be ventilated, they will set up an ad hoc committee uh, well, consisting of uh, different political parties, representatives from different political parties. And they will debate this issue, and this committee will later take this to a, a plenary sitting of, 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 of parliament uh, where this will be debated. Uh, but uh, Peck of Tometra is, uh, once again, this is coming from a democratic alliance. We know there has been other... Uh, you know, <laughs> actions against uh, to try and impeach even the president from the ATM and all that. So these are going to be ongoing things. And the Democratic Alliance, based on, on the past, I will not be surprised if they don't also take this once again to the court to try and, and compel uh, Parliament to accede to this uh, this request uh, because they will feel that it's within their rights, it's within the rights of South Africans that this matter be discussed at the highest mm. uh, institution in the country, or obviously the second highest, obviously it can't be higher than uh, uh, the constitution of this country. Well, Professor, while you know, the, the, the Speaker of Parliament may argue that establishing an ad hoc committee may be redundant given the work of other institutions, the request made by the African Transformation uh, Movement for uh, removal proceedings to be instituted against the President, uh, your thoughts on the Speaker's uh, you know, decision to refuse that particular request, 
uh, because the African transformation movement is is purely acting on what it believes are the you know the the thoughts and opinions of South African voters that they no longer enjoy confidence in, in the president's ability to lead the country and in instances like this uh, political parties represented in Parliament have every right uh, to request that the speaker entertain a, a request for removal proceedings against the president so in this instance was she right uh, to decline ATM's request yeah well one has to start who are those South Africans because I don't know who the ATM represents and I don't think many South Africans will agree with them because we, we've got a huge problem in our country uh, people tend to uh, identify with an issue based on uh, their partisan affiliations uh, how many scandals has there been within the African National Congress? And not scandals from rank and file members, the key senior members of the party. And, and the party members will still rally behind uh, uh, their leaders. And, and this will be the same, although, although we all know that the African National Congress is divided currently. Uh, now, calls from parties like the ATM definitely does get media coverage uh, to a certain extent. It they take the legal recourse, uh, it does damage, uh, obviously, the image of the ruling party and, and those implicated, but that's where it ends. Uh, it does not have weight, and whether we like it or not, we've seen it numerous times, even if they go the route of impeachment. I don't see how uh, such a, 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 an action will be supported by ANC members, especially if it's an open uh, you know, uh, vote by and a raising of a hand. So all these kind of issues, but fact of the matter is the pala pala issue we should never take away from it. It is a serious matter. It, it speaks to uh, the kind of leader that we have, uh, and opposition parties have a right uh, to obviously try and put pressure on whoever to try and raise their uh, their. Opinion. But for me, that's where it, I, I don't think many South Africans share that. But I strongly believe also there might be a lot of uh, uh, many. South Africans who are disappointed in what happened uh, or the conduct of the current president. Mm. You know, I think especially in the aftermath of the Nkandla judgment that was so scathing uh, with regards to Parliament's failure to hold a President Jacob Zuma, former President Jacob Zuma, account uh, for the Nkandla scandal, there is a lot of sensitivity around whether or not Parliament is ever doing enough uh, to hold the executive authority in this country to account. Uh, we now have the DA's leader, John Stenhazen, accusing uh, uh, the Speaker of Parliament of doing just that, of shielding the executive authority and not exercising her constitutional powers to, uh, to, to, to ensure that Parliament holds the executive to account. I wonder if speakers in these positions are able to escape that particular opinion, that particular perspective when it comes to issues around the ANC as the governing party um, being accused of corruption and Parliament seemingly having its hands tied in terms of being able to do anything about it. No, oh, a, a, a very difficult question to fatune, uh, uh, but it's actually very easy to digest uh, because fact of the matter is uh, all the representatives, whether it's a speaker, deputy speaker, representative from the National Council of Provinces, uh, they are members of political parties. And once you've got that set up, I, I can't see that in any, any other way. Even if you do get somebody who seems to be publicly, obviously, uh, to at least its objective, I don't think that the current setup, and I don't know what other setup will we ever have in South Africa or anywhere else in the country, in the world, because uh, representatives are party members, and they will tend to lean towards, uh, you know, as a softer spot for their pol political parties. Uh, and it's the same situation playing out in, in, in the country, but sometimes it's very difficult to, it's, it's a, almost like a blurry line between whether, a, when a decision has been taken, does that, as decision, has that decision been taken based on a subject? 
objective uh, a view to try and protect the party or is there a decision being taken in the interest of South Africans because for me parliament is there to consolidate our democracy and to advance the interest of South Africans but as I've indicated during my opening statement and even with an opinion piece that I've written about uh, the chapter 9 institution especially particularly the uh, the public protector's office, you will forever have these challenges because politicians are involved and unfortunately that is the nature of politics. Politicians will always try to protect their own interests and the interests of their, their parties. But one had to be very careful not to uh, each time jump on that bandwagon to say that a decision has been taken to protect the party. Because for me, where I'm sitting with the Palapala issue, is that yes, Parliament has the right to discuss this, uh, but South Africans want uh, a criminal investigation and a criminal investigation which is inclu concluded as soon as possible, and based on that, they can make their own judgment. Mm. Well, Professor, you repeatedly on our program today have said, have highlighted at least how sensitive an issue the Palapala Pala farm uh, robbery is. Um, given the nature of news cycles and, and, and how certain stories will often hog the attention um, of, of a news cycle, uh, the role of media is very clear in this instance. When it comes to the allegations leveled against the president, our role is to ensure that we keep the spotlight on any claims or allegations of maladministration and support uh, democratic institutions in that way. But how else can we ensure that the pressure is never lifted on this particular issue uh, to ensure that in criminal investigations that are already underway are in fact concluded uh, in a speedy manner? No, the onus is also on South Africans. And I keep on emphasizing the point. It starts from our own communities. What South Africans have done we have went into a mode of inactivity. We are good of making a lot of noise on social media and all that. And by this, I do not condone and I don't encourage any South Africans to take the root of violence. Violence will not bring any uh, solution. But the fact of the matter is we do have power. We have turned our politicians into demigods. You should see how they behave, how they respond to uh, 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 even their own party members. Uh, you know, you get an ordinary rank and file member suddenly being elected later, and, and you can see how that individual turns into a monster. This is what South Africans have done. One route how we can resolve this is that South Africans, yes, can support their leaders, they can support their parties, because it's not our role to come and encourage people to join party X or party Z. But fact of the matter is, South Africans have a right to say, no, we are not going to allow certain things in our name. The so-called uh, Gupta state capture happened under the watch of South Africans, not only politicians, South Africans, many South Africans were aware of that. What pressure did we brought on our leaders? We should not allow any leader, irrespective whether he's from party blue, party black, party pink, uh, to continue doing what they are doing. I think South Africans have been taken for a ride for way too long by politicians who are taking advantage of the situation in this country. And South Africans also have to play an active role. We should go back to basics and not back to basics what have been muted for our municipalities. Back to basics where we have active citizenry who says, no, we don't want crime in our streets, in our neighborhoods, in our province, in our regions. We don't want politicians who are not working. And I am not one who will move for certain individuals, but you should look at what, and I put one individual who even indicated that PA leader, Jason McKenzie, will not reach much. But right. look at what he's doing. But that's now something else. These are the kind of things that you want. Mm. Let us not look at a tender to try and fix something. This is where we are in South Africa, where we celebrate mediocrity, where we celebrate leaders who only distort and divide our communities. Well, Professor, thank you so much for your time and for coming on to the program and sharing your insights with us. That's a political analyst, Professor Situlaho Matavesa, helping us to unpack uh, the Speaker's decision there to reject that proposal by the DA.